On November 21st, 2008, the world was blessed with a cinematic masterpiece that changed the standards for romance and fantasy films everywhere. A movie that makes classic vampire films such as Dracula, Blade, or even Abraham Lincoln the Vampire Slayer pale in comparison. And of course, I'm talking about Twilight. If you don't know about Twilight, well then I suggest you get a life and maybe start watching good cinema. Twilight was originally a book series written by Stephanie Myers, and it grew in popularity amongst teens and young adults and it grew a fandom so strong it lasts today and currently still trends on TikTok. The movie was a huge success and starred actors such as Kristen Stewart, Robert Pattinson, Taylor Lautner, just to name a few. But I will get into more important details about the franchise and the iconic value it has later. First, I think it's important to give a brief summary of the series, but I assume most of you have seen the films. But if you haven't, Twilight is a romance fantasy coming of age comedy action horror movie that puts anything directed by Quentin Tarantino to shame. Kristen Stewart plays Bella Swan, an awkward, clumsy girl from Arizona who recently moves to Forks, Washington to her dad's house. Forks is a small town with an even smaller school population, so naturally, Bella stands out. Eventually, Bella makes friends with some of her classmates that introduce her to the Cullens. We are introduced to the Cullens in a slow motion shot of them striding into the cafeteria dressed in all white and fashionably late. It's so cheesy and dramatic, you have to love it. The perfect looking and mysterious group interests Bella. Edward Cullen, the main love interest of the movie, happens to have biology class with Bella where they get introduced to each other. This, of course, happens after Edward skips class for like a whole week because oh, Bella smells so bad. So sour, like I know it's funky. because he's attracted to her, but Robert Patton's acting in this, like, please. It looks like she stinks. So as time goes on and Bella starts exploring Forks, getting into trouble and becoming nosy, she gets closer to Edward and learns that they're all vampires and stuff after like Google searching it. However, the main T of the movies. The whole purpose is the love triangle between Bella, Jacob, and Edward. Jacob is a friend of Bella's and lives in a reservation near Forks. Of course, since this is a vampire movie, werewolves have to be involved and it just so happens Jacob is a werewolf. How did Bella, this new girl in town, get so lucky to have a vampire and a werewolf fight over her? I don't know but I support her. Anyways, throughout the saga, Bella escapes vampires, confronts the Volturi, which is like a royal family in the vampire universe that enforces the rules, and works out this love triangle between Edward and Jacob. Since I gave a little background of the film, I just wanna preface that if you're team Jacob, I suggest you get therapy and stay away from me. I'm sorry, but Edward is so much better and isn't a freak. And if I'm saying a man that watches a girl in her sleep isn't a freak compared to another man, then you know Jacob is bad. <coughs> now, it's time to get into the whole point of the video. The reasons why the Twilight series are impeccable and show-stopping, and the best series in cinematic history. To begin with, I want to point out that the soundtrack was hand-picked to perfection. The soundtrack ranges from beautifully composed original piano scores to alternative music such as Paramore and Muse. Emotional songs such as Turning Page by Sleeping At Last or A Thousand Years by Christina Perry honestly make Twilight a tearjerker at times. I say this with 100% seriousness. I do not know a series with a better soundtrack than Twilight. The songs perfectly match the vibes and transport you into another universe. There's nothing that I would change or add because it's literally perfect in every way. Whenever it's rainy or cloudy outside, you can turn on the Twilight soundtrack and feel like you're actually in Forks, Washington. Supermassive Black Hole by Muse is an outer body experience. This song plays during possibly the greatest scene in film history, the baseball scene. The only other baseball scene that can come close to this one is maybe I Don't Dance in High School Musical 2. 
but even that doesn't come close to the greatness of the Twilight baseball scene. The vampire family has to play baseball during a thunderstorm because their super strength is so strong that hitting the baseball with a bat sounds like thunder. It's genius, honestly. Alice, Edward's adopted sister, pitches the ball in a way that enlightened a spiritual awakening inside of me, and I'm pretty sure it enlightened everyone when they first saw that. The classic cheesy baseball uniforms and the banter between the characters offers a really fun viewing. Also, it's just hot. The way Jasper swings his bat, please. Jackson Rathbone deserved an Oscar for that technique and performance. One of the most important parts of the scene and of the movie as a whole is the blue tint. The blue tint is so iconic, you can't even mention Twilight without thinking of it. The tint makes the movie stand out and it makes you feel like you're actually in this cold and rainy Forks, Washington. Many people laugh or share disdain for the blue hue. Even I laughed at it when I first saw it. However, I think the stylistic choice is a part of what makes Twilight so memorable and I grew to love it. An important thing that I wanted to mention was that the first Twilight movie was directed by Katherine Hardwick, a woman. I think it's important and vital to recognize women in film and to support them and advocate for more women to direct and write films. I mentioned some of the actors that appeared on screen earlier, but I really just want to harp on how good the casting actually was. Kristen Stewart plays Bella as a perfectly clumsy, awkward, and angsty teen, and the chemistry between her and Robert Pattinson is just unreal. Robert Pattinson nails playing Edward by first of all looking perfect, and second of all adding a level of seriousness and care into the character that set the standard for romantic guys for girls to dream over. One of the most important casting decisions was to cast Peter Facinelli to play Carlisle. That was so genius, Einstein couldn't even have thought of it. I'm being honest, if Carlisle was my doctor and I had my arm cut off and I was impaled in need of serious medical attention and Carlisle walked into my operating room, I would limp out of that hospital because I'm not letting Carlisle see me at my worst. In the book, Stephanie Meyer wrote Carlisle to be this overly handsome, attractive guy and that translated well over film. It did. Characters such as Alice, Jasper, Seth, and Emmett are so lovable and kind that you can't help but love them. They add another layer of warmth and entertainment to the film, and their love and passion for Bella is just so touching. I am a Seth fan first, and a Twilight fan second. However, mentioning Jasper, there is a downside to his character, and that is that he was a Confederate soldier before he was turned into a vampire years ago. I honestly don't understand the decision to make that his storyline. I don't think it matches his personality and it doesn't add anything to the film. They could have made Jasper a farmer, a cowboy, or even a union soldier and it would have made just as much sense and wouldn't it have been weird and unsettling to watch. Another confusing character in the movies is Bella's mom. Bella's mom to me just seems extremely weird, distant, and deadbeat to be honest. The whole reason Bella moves to Washington is because Bella's mom is moving to Jacksonville, Florida with her new boyfriend for his baseball career. I just want to point out that if this happened recently, Bella's mom's boyfriend would have been playing for the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimps. Like you're moving across the United States to play for a team called the Jumbo Shrimps and you're leaving your daughter behind. Okay, like no, we're not doing that. Maybe I'm nitpicking because I just don't understand why Bella's mom would divorce Charlie, Bella's dad. Charlie is a cop in Forks and sports a sick mustache, which I think was a great choice. Like just look at his mustache. He looks so nice. Throughout the whole saga, Charlie is extremely supportive of Bella but he gets disrespected literally every two seconds. Especially in the first movie when Bella comes home from a date with Edward and then she starts yelling at him and saying extremely disrespectful stuff. 
she says it because she has a vampire chasing her and she has to get away from her dad so like he stays protected but I just think she crossed the line in so many things and all the stuff she said that every time I watch this scene I get mad at Bella like I feel so bad for Charlie and even later on in the saga when Bella and Edward get married and Bella gets pregnant and she gets sick because Edward's a vampire and she is a human they tell Charlie that she's going to Sweden for this facility, but there's even a moment of time where Charlie thinks Bella died. Like, you guys are putting this man into so much stress. They didn't even tell him where they were going on their honeymoon. Like, Charlie deserved better. Even though I speak highly of the casting choices for the Twilight Saga, a huge downside is the fact that they decided to cast Taylor Lautner as a Native American Jacob. Much to my surprise, Taylor Lautner is completely white. I believe they should have casted a Native American actor to play the role of Jacob. I believe that representation matters and I fight for diversity in film. Taylor Lautner did a fine job playing Jacob, but I feel like a Native American actor could have done just as good or even better. Moving on, I want to talk about how the setting of a cold, rainy forks impacts the visual aesthetic of the film. Throughout the series, we're introduced to different forests, beaches, small towns, and mountains that are just absolutely stunning. For example, the fields of flowers that Bella and Edward lay in elevate the beauty and romance of the film. Even the wedding Bella and Edward have is staged and decorated in a way that just enhances the fantasy, romance, and magical feel of the film. I actually have pictures of Bella and Edward's wedding venue in my wedding Pinterest board because why wouldn't I want my wedding to look like that? It's literally the best wedding I've ever seen. Twilight actually has a good streak with their casting, their visual appeal, their editing, well, some of their editing. There's this scene in New Moon where Bella tosses a piece of pizza to Jacob and it transitions into a tool. It's just so cool, honestly. I also love this spinning transition effect that they do with Bella when she's in this depressive episode because it's really effective in showing the different seasons passing and how long she's in this depressive episode. And it's just really cool to watch. I think it's a powerful take on depression and I just enjoy watching it. Now, some of the editing can look cheap and cheesy. I think that's a lot of people's problems with Twilight. For example, the super speed that the vampires run in can sometimes look bad. It's actually laughable. Most notably and most joked about is the CGI baby. Later on in the movies, Bella and Edward have a baby, and since it's a vampire baby, the aging process has to speed up, and also it has to look perfect. So in order to accommodate for this, they CGI'd a doll and a real baby. By no means is this baby perfect, and in fact, it's ugly and scary. But don't let me pointing out this flaw impact the movie in a negative way. In fact, I think the CGI is a positive because of how funny and memorable it is. Whether you like to acknowledge it or not, it's camp. And camp is fantastic. If the baby looked normal, no one would care. But a baby with big eyes, teeth, and ugly hair? That requires your full attention. And yeah, I'm gonna care. Also, the fact that the baby's name is Renesame? That is so hideous. I have to actually worship it. Now, even though Renesame, Resume, Resume, whatever you want to call her, is an ugly name, it is better than EJ or Edward Jacob as Bella wanted to name the baby. I think Bella actually inhaled some drugs at that point because someone should have slapped her. Someone should have slapped that thought out of her head because that was so terrible, Bella. Please. If I was Edward, I would be mad. You're naming the baby, Jacob. What? Girl, bye. It was Nessie who wanted me there. Nessie? You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster?! Twilight is actually so camp, it redefines camp. 
The saga is the definition of it's so bad it's good. Vampires that sparkle in the sun is only something that can be executed in the Twilight universe. Another thing people may argue is a negative for the series is that the dialogue and the script is bad, but to that, I would say they're wrong. Iconic lines such as, Bella, where the hell have you been, Loka? Or, you better hold on tight, spider monkey. Or even, battle scars are so awkward and bizarre, it's almost like Tommy Wiseau wrote them. Bella! Where the hell have you been, Loka? But to me, Tommy Wiseau and Shakespeare are one and the same. Both are ahead of their time and extremely influential in performing arts. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. So basically, what I'm saying is that the Twilight script is Shakespeare-level work. The dialogue may seem bad, but it's actually niche, top-level humor. My final thoughts is just that the Twilight series is actually fun to watch and I think we should stop bullying movies that young women and girls like just because they aren't directed by Quentin Tarantino or Christopher Nolan. I think Twilight got a lot of unwarranted flack and girls got made fun of for fangirling over it for no reason. I think we should partake in watching movies for fun and just not take them as seriously. It's okay to indulge in a so bad it's good film. Of course the saga has its downfalls, it's super cheesy and awkward, but I think that's what's so endearing about the films. I'm glad that this series is rising in popularity again on apps such as Twitter and TikTok and people can finally reminisce and just enjoy the nostalgia of the Twilight series. The Twilight series is honestly one of my favorite series ever and I wanted to make this video as a joke just because I thought it would be funny to like claim Twilight is the best movie franchise in existence but also because I wanted to share some of my genuine opinions about it. I think it would be really interesting if you guys shared your opinions on the film down below and we can have a discussion. No Twilight slander here though, only positive opinions. So in conclusion, rewatch the Twilight Saga and just have fun with it. Also, Charlie deserved better and Team Edward.